a revolutionary mind in the realm of physics, a pioneering engineer of optics, but most memorably, a man of courage who changed the way we viewed our universe, despite the efforts of those who sought to silence him. This is the life of Galileo Galilei. So, Galileo, tell me about your early life. When I was still young, my family and I moved to Florence, my father's city of birth. I was sent to study at the Camo de Lis Monastery at Vallombrosa, southeast of Florence, as soon as I was of appropriate age. I remember that was where I first thought I had found my path in life. The Camaldician monk's life seemed strangely attractive. There was something noble about the solitary life of a hermit and the strict life of a monk. I became a novice, much to the displeasure of my father, who decided that I was destined to become a medical doctor. Vincenzo withdrew Galileo from the monastery and had him abandon his idea of becoming a monk. He continued his schooling in Florence until he was 17 years old when he was sent back to Pisa to enroll for a medical degree at the university there. Medicine was dull. I never really had any interest, though I tried for my father's sake. Nevertheless, I gave into temptation and attended courses on what I really enjoyed, mathematics and physics. My father, however, was adamant on the idea of his eldest son going into medicine. It was not until one summer that he was finally persuaded by one of my instructors to let me study what I really loved. Galileo was then able to give himself completely to the world of math and physics, quickly climbing to fame. Not three years after convincing his father to allow him to study these subjects, he wrote his first scientific book, which concerned Archimedes' method of finding centers of gravity. I was able to find a position at the University of Padua, one that paid a salary three times that of my former occupation. Eighteen years, eighteen wonderful years I spent at that university, and never once have I regretted it. Galileo studied the mechanics related to motion during his time at the University of Padua, and formulated the correct law of falling bodies and the parabolic path that is followed by projectiles. It was in 1609 that Galileo received the single most important letter of his life. His friend describes in his letter a spyglass that a Dutchman had showcased in Venice. Galileo quickly made a series of telescopes far better than that of the Dutchman. It was not long before I turned my telescope to the heavens and observed. It was unlike anything I could have imagined. The things I saw. And so, in about two months, December and January, he made more discoveries that changed the world than anyone has ever made before or since. With his telescope, Galileo traveled to the mountains of the moon, the moons of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, and even beyond the wildest imaginations of man. I spent a good portion of the remainder of my life with, well, my head in the clouds. Having observed irrefutable evidence that the Earth revolved about the sun, Galileo became a supporter of Copernicus. He published a dialogue concerning the two chief systems of the world, Ptolemaic and Copernican, where he attacks the Aristotelian belief that the Earth was the center of the universe. The Inquisition almost immediately banned its sale and summoned Galileo for his trial. He was found guilty and condemned to lifelong imprisonment. How do you feel about the Inquisition's decision? How does any guiltless man feel about their sentence? <sighs> I suppose it wasn't the worst thing that could happen. I received a house arrest sentence rather than a prison sentence. I had my life, at least. Really, it was more like an early retirement than a sentence. Under house arrest, Galileo was able to compose discourses and mathematical demonstrations concerning the two new sciences. This work produced many exciting new venues such as kinematics, pendulum clocks, and infinitesimals. Sadly, Galileo did not live long enough to see the fruition of his ideas. He died in 1642, and although he died quietly, his voice now reaches millions of people, and he is remembered as one of the forefathers of modern science.